chair It's our time to shine Show that's the kind of state of mind You gotta combine with hard work and time You gotta climb to the top Don't let yourself drop till your heart stops Let this beat rock Got a new clock and a new stock for this new rock All Just right, let your mind Simo's in the house And I've had a few people ask me some of the stuff we like to eat And some of the things I cook So I guess I'll go ahead and throw up a little video And show you how this fat boy can get down But uh, tonight we're gonna make our version of uh, enchilada casserole uh, about the way when you split everything up it about ten twelve dollars what it cost uh, and then you still have stuff left over from other uh, like the meat and the cheese stuff so you can make other stuff with uh, but stick around we're gonna go in and show you all the stuff that you need and then we'll get everything uh, ready set up show you how to build it and then cook and show you the afterwards what it looks like all right everybody here we go here's here's the starts and the ingredients you need for uh the enchilada casserole we're making tonight but you only need about a third of this hamburger meat so that leaves enough for some hamburgers a little small meat low so make you fry some up make some nachos or something like that because you will have to have the cheese but you will not use all the cheese here we use the mexican mix style blend then you got two onions, you want to chop them up real fine. You got your yellow corn tortilla shells, which you will have to uh, kind of lightly cook them in uh, oil in a frying pan, soften them up. And then you've got your base, which is the red chili enchilada sauce. One of your toppings, your other topping is the large uh, olives that you have to slice up. Then what we do is when we fry, brown up the uh, meat, we mix the meat into the chili for the layers on it. But then for every for every layer you do, you know, you do a layer of the, you put your base down, put a layer of the uh, tortilla shell, spread on some of the chili and meat uh, dill, add you some olives, add you some cheese and onion, and put you another layer and just keep repeating until you're satisfied with the stack that you have. So I'm going to get around getting this... Uh, all situated and cut up measured and like i said usually this is like twelve dollars or under what we spend when we make this milk and like i said you still have some left over to uh make like a, a separate meal or a snack uh so i mean it comes out to a pretty good deal because you can all, you can always get like two meals out of when we do this because like i said we use about a third of the hamburger meat about ha maybe half of the cheese and stuff like that and like i said we we might have two dollars, like I said, maybe twelve dollars in the whole thing. So let's just uh, get this rolling, and I'll be back once I get the onions and the olives right, cut I was, up. I got to thinking maybe I need to show you the way how I uh, dice up my onions, how I start off when I slice them up. Uh, some people want them big, some people want them small. We mix them, you know, a little bit big and small. So this is what I, I start off doing first. You have your knife, as you can see, I've already started. I take slices and cut inward. Then I will take the knife across. Oh, sliding out from me. Oh, there we go again. It don't matter. It, you can see it comes out that way. But then I, I'll start off a small size. You can see it just already breaks up nice and evenly. Always be careful. Watch your fingers. Sometimes I nick them. But see it. Most of the majority of them gets up real fine. Real small pieces. Kind of what you want in the layers. You really don't want big chunks into it. So I'm going to get this in a bowl. And uh, go on from there. And we'll come back. And we'll let you. We'll show you. I think olives. If you want to see the olives. I'll throw the olives in there. How I slice them up as well. Kind of a little, see how it goes. But uh, we're hungry, so I'm gonna try to get this on a roll, and then we'll come back showing you how how to do the tortillas and then how to put it all together. We got the board cleaned off. I already started up on the olives, as you can see. I slice them a little thin, a little bit. Like I said, when you buy them whole and you slice them yourself, you get a whole lot more for your money than buying them already split. Cause they're like 99 cents to a dollar 29 here for. Uh, small little like 
eight ounce can of them. So we always buy the big ones. Always quality control. Check them too. We love black olives around here. I love green olives as well, but we'll get these chopped up and uh, we'll make sure we come back and we'll start uh, browning up the meat. We'll brown, get the meat browned up and chili warmed up and get it all put together. So let's stick around and <clears throat> let's make some enchiladas. Browning the uh, hamburger meat here and uh, get it going pretty good. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt to it, a little, little seasoning to it first. So I use a spatula on this, usually in the brown pot. I don't like using the frying pan to get this because I go to swinging it everywhere. But I try to get the meat kind of good and fine. I don't want it really too chunky. That way you can get at least a few layers and there's a lot more of the meat spread around in the filling. But uh, if, let this cook up a little bit and brown up. I wind up you'll want to drain the juice off of it after a little bit. So we'll end up getting a juice drain and finish browning it up. And then I'll add a little bit of taco seasoning to it. To the meat where that meat will have a little bit of that flavor. But uh, Come back and we'll uh, get the uh, have show you how it, how it looks like after we get add everything else to it and got it drained and browned up. So stick around. All right, we got it got it drained here. Now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start adding some of the taco seasoning to it a little bit. Add just a little bit. And kind of swirly on it. Get this browned up. Get that seasoning cooking in there pretty good. And the way I always do, I cheat. Usually, I, uh, I was going to say was, uh, usually, I need a spoon. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Usually I cook the chili separate from the hamburger meat and then add it together then. But uh wife's getting me a spoon here. But I'm ready to eat. I'm ready. it still comes out the same way, so get the chili in there. Turn your heat down so you don't burn the meat and the chili. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's time to do now. A little bit there. You can see it starting to kind of looks like a, a thick chili deal, but this is we make we I make all kinds of enchiladas, chili enchiladas, beef enchiladas, chicken enchiladas, but this is just a fast, cheap casserole, enchilada casserole throw together for them hillbillies of my family in laws. They love it. And then we'll make sure you have enough. So you can see it's a little thick and thick and down. You got more of that meat in it. And then, like I said, once you add the cheese and stuff like that, but uh, I'm gonna let this kind of warm up a little bit. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Let that warm up and cook. A chili cook and meat cook in there. We're gonna come back where I'm cooking the uh, tortilla shells. All right. To get them ready now to start ready the layers. We're gonna soften up our tortilla shells. Kind of cook them a little bit. You don't wanna. You want them hard, it's kind of a quick flash until they really get softened up a little bit, soak in some of that oil, like a quick cook. But uh, with the pan we use, it usually takes about 18 of these. So, oh, oh, oh see, like I said, <laughs> fire! <laughs> That's kind of hard cooking two fat people. One trying to record, one trying to trying to cook. Usually, I'm in here in the, by myself doing this all, but I didn't see how I could cook and hold the camera. Well, hopefully, we don't burn the house down. <laughs> but we'll uh, 
Let's see here. Cook a few of these up here. You don't want your grease getting really too hot either, so you want to keep an eye on your temperature of your grease. But you, know, you stack them on top of each other, they'll uh, soak in and soft, stay softened up. Here we go. We got the tortilla shells. We got them all softened up, as you can see, softened up. You want them to stay kind of little, just with a little bit of grease in them. Tortilla shells will soak them up. Got the chili mixture here. Got my spoon. Got all the stuff here to make with. First thing you want to do is put a little bit of cheese in the bottom because when you go to put the flour or the corn tortillas on top, you want it to kind of have it off a little bit with when that cheese will melt. But I always take the red, it's red enchilada cheese sauce. Put your a wet base down in the bottom. Helps it not stick, and then it, and it'll soak the corn tortilla will soak it in. You pour about half of that there. And take your make the first layer. Okay, there, which you'll overlap them. Ooh, these are still hot. I tell you what, fresh off the oven or off the frying pan. I'm telling you. And sprinkle just a little just a little bit on, on top of this here. A little cheese. I like I said this is the, the Mexican style. Take some of this, spread it apart, and should be able to just kind of smear it out a little bit. When you get to cooking, it'll cook all the way. It'll spread out more once you start putting the layers on there. So Put your spoonful and just kind of spread it a little bit. Good heap of spoonful. Around here most of the time, a lot of times, unless I'm trying to make it real gourmet, gourmet, I don't use use measuring cups to measure out everything. I just, I've done it for so long. I know by hands. I've worked in fast food restaurants, fancy steak restaurants and stuff, so. I, I've learned it all by look, feel, and pretty sure a lot of y'all have. You want to make sure to get enough up around the edges where them won't dry out too much, and then you'll have that. So then, then what I do is take a little more cheese, dropping cheese everywhere. all up around in the nook and crannies. If you're a big person like me and you can handle cheese, you like cheese. We like to be cheesy. Oh, I missed it. Not standing up and doing this makes it a little hard. Then you take some of your onion. You notice there's little chunks, big chunks, like I said, that's what I was saying earlier in the video. You don't want all big chunks in it. Then you turn around. Take a little bit of olives. Kind of toss around there. We, we love the olives. She starts shaking. Then you want she to see this food. She's layer. hungry too. But we're, we're still going on to the second layer. So, like I said, you just. Wow. Them's getting hot further down on the bottom you go. Still freshly hot. So you got it overlap. So uh, we'll uh, put another layer on here. Oh, wait, I forgot the cheese. Like I said, you want enough to worry it'll let it cook all the way through. Put like a little base on there. Take another scoop. Me, I'm going. I'm ready. I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my scoops already on there. Get it ready, and just work it out. Just patting it out. 
Just a tap. Just tap, tap it in. <laughs> just a tap. Now, like I said, you can always go back. And you don't go all the way around and all the way to the edge and stuff. That's fine. Because you got the other layers that'll cover it. But you can always... You know, I make a mess you're cleaning it, right? Mm. You wanted this. So, you get to do the cleanest. It's like spanking a baby's bottom. Just tab it in there. Put a little more spoonful right here in this corner. Make sure it's got enough air. And then cheese. This is when you want to start getting a little bit thicker on the cheese. Like I said, and all this is probably, it should be like, it cost us, I think, around 12 maybe at the most $13 for all this. But like I said, you, if you by the time you figure, if you figure in by the portions and stuff, it'll, um, it's less than that. It's probably around ten dollars because we didn't. We only used a third of the hamburger meat. We ain't even using half of the cheese and stuff. So in the long run, then you take your onions, throw them on there, just like so. Just spread them out a little bit. Take a few of the olives. I get some all uh, the little places. Have a little surprise when it comes out. And then we'll uh, we'll come back when we get the last layer done and put on and show you what it looks like when it's finally all completely put together. So stick around. Alright, it's done, it's done. That's what it looks like when it comes out the oven. Looking all good and melty and good there. So I've already started cutting it up some. So when I come back, I'll have it plated where you can see what it looks like on the plate. Add a little sour cream to it, and it's time to chow down on some of Simo's poor man enchilada casserole. We love you because you're always in Simo's house. It's a Simo thing, and you just wouldn't understand.